Hello, welcome to the Roundhouse Podcast with Paul Solentrop of Wichita State University Strategic Communications. Thanks for your time. We're going to talk Shocker Volleyball today. They are nearing the end of their spring schedule. We have Katie Galligan, a junior libero slash defensive specialist from Omaha, Nebraska, and Emerson Wilford, a junior outside hitter from Laguna Hills, California. They are here to update us on the spring. Katie recorded a career-high 20 digs in a win over Tulsa in the National Volleyball Invitational Championship last fall. Emerson started 17 matches in 2023. She had three double-doubles. She led the Shockers with 11 kills in the NIVC title win at UTEP. The Shockers went 26-8 and last fall on their way to the NIVC title. They have played Oklahoma, Kansas State, and several other schools in a Kansas City tournament so far this spring. They wrap things up in Lawrence on Saturday, where they will play Kansas and Missouri. Emerson, you wear number 13. Is there a story associated with that number? Yeah, so basically my dad played professional hockey all while growing up, and so when I would go to his games and stuff, like he was always number three, and so just me and like my other siblings have all kind of been number three all while playing like sports, but when I got here, Bradley was number three, so I took 13 because I felt like it was like the next best thing. Makes sense. I was gonna. Add, I was gonna guess that about your dad, and that will come into play later. Tell us. Give the read. Give the listeners a little background on your dad. Um, my dad just played professional hockey all while I was growing up, but he only ever played in like the AHL. He now coaches in the NHL up in New York, like upstate New York. So, I don't know. I grew up a lot as a kid watching hockey. I lived in Europe for a little bit too to watch him finish playing. So I moved around a lot as a kid. <laughs> You did indeed. Katie, number six, is there a story behind wearing number six? Um, similar to Emerson's, it was my dad's number. He was number 16, though. And then there were six people in my family. Six was part of his number and been six for as long as I can remember, so I just stuck with it. Okay. We mentioned the Shockers won the NIVC last fall. They defeated Arkansas State, Tulsa, Drake, Montana State, and won at UTEP. Katie, how does that experience help when you get rolling this spring? I think that in order to win that tournament, you have to continue to win over and over again. And I think part of the hard part about that is unsure where you're going to be playing next, what time. You don't necessarily have a set set schedule, and you've been playing for so long at that point. Injuries start happening. Um, People check out. Sometimes it gets mentally and physically tough. And I think in the spring, you can kind of say, the same thing with that like we've been playing for a really long time but we've shown that we can be successful in those areas and so bringing that into our spring season is important. Emerson what do you think the team got out of the NIVC experience? Yeah I think we all just kind of saw like if we just keep pushing and like keep working together as a team like that things can go well and that like it was a big goal we wanted to reach but now hopefully like this season we can keep trying to like reach these goals and saw that like our goal was attainable like when we decided we were going to play in the NIVC I think it was good to see that like those goals can be reached. So let's set the stage for fans who might not be super familiar with spring volleyball. Emerson, describe it. What's the goal? What are you trying to get out of these these weeks and these matches? Yeah. Well, I think Lambo tries to break down a lot of like the individual skills you do and stuff. So like we've been working a lot on like shot selections for me and stuff and just for all the pins in general. So like today we, we stayed in the whole one drill for the whole day, but like we just kept working at it and trying to perfect things that maybe like weren't as great the season before. So yeah, and then you just... The games are a little bit different, too. It's not like, oh, a game just set to 25. It's like time or like you play five sets no matter what. So I think you just learn like you learn a lot, really, is what spring is. Yeah, Katie, what's the vibe in the gym? You're going to roll into uh, KU, play two matches. How does it differ from maybe a regular season match? In the regular season, I'd say we do focus a lot on the other teams. We have film, we scout, we run certain defenses or certain offenses based on the other team. Whereas in the spring, I think you really focus on ourselves. Like Emerson said, we break down things positionally. We really focus on what we're doing as a team. And I think that's the main difference between the fall and the spring. So right now, we're focused on ourselves, um, relationships, kind of the vibes in the gym as well. All of those are super important. And I think, again, focusing on ourselves and what we can bring, learn from each match, and finish up the spring strong. Katie, take us back a few weeks, uh, the first practice, first meeting, you're back together with the coaches for the first time since the NIVC. What was Coach Chris Lamb's message to get get things started this spring? 
well, he's always very excited to get back to it, and I think that makes us excited as well. It was strange at first. It was a small group compared to the 22 or however many we had in the fall to come back. I think we're at 13, so definitely different, but I wouldn't say different in a bad way. Uh, we have to get prepared for the incoming girls, the freshmen and the transfers, so I think that his kind of mentality was new group, but same goals, get after it. Emerson, what's the biggest thing you've learned about the Shockers so far this spring? You've had the matches, uh, Oklahoma, Kansas State, played in the tournament in Kansas City. What's popped into your mind about what you've seen from this team so far? Um, I mean, I think obviously we lost a lot of our like huge hitters that used to put points up on the board for us last year, and so kind of just trying to like rebuild and like we set like the expectations, like how we want things to go. So it's been nice, like we've all been able to like work together to like kind of like focus on how we want the team to be next year, I think. So I think that's been awesome that like we could like set those expectations. Two shockers joined the team at semester, uh, freshman setter Sarah Musial and a redshirt freshman outside hitter Alyssa Gonzalez. She's a transfer from TCU. You are now two of the more experienced people on this team. Katie, how do you go about in integrating new people into the team at semester? I think that's a super important aspect on our team and any team for that matter. Definitely forming relationships early on, especially them coming from new places. Sarah coming from high school, it's a huge change. And I think no matter how good you are or how prepared you feel, it is definitely different. So just helping them through that, um, hanging out outside of practice as well. And when we're in there, giving them our support and encouraging them while also kind of showing them how we do things, what our culture is like, and just being there to support them through it. So Emerson, when I asked the coaches about you, they said she's really good at welcoming people, making them feel comfortable, but she's also demanding. She also wants them to find their way, do the right things. How do you strike that right balance with someone who's who's new? Yeah, well, I think just like what I was kind of saying earlier about like setting our expectations, like, oh, like this is what we want, like how we want season to operate, like how our relationships are important too. And I think like I've tried to develop relationships with both, both Alyssa and Sarah. I mean, I'm going to hang out with them tonight. Like I think all of us have tried to do a good job of like pulling them in and like making them know like they're a part of the team and stuff. So, but then also like they, they kind of know like what we expect or like how we want things to operate, so I think that's awesome too. So if you are a Shocker volleyball fan listening to this and you are curious about who's maybe somebody who didn't play a whole lot last fall but is really doing some, some nice things this spring, Katie, who pops into your mind first that people might keep an eye on uh, when they start start playing next fall? I think that Allie Polson has really made an impact in the gym. Um, as well as our other middles because Stout is the only real returner who played a bunch. And I think that that can be difficult, especially with Izzy injured. They're not used to Sarah setting it, and that's a relationship that's building. But I think they've done a good job of really working on that, and I'm super excited to see how that develops over the summer and into next fall as I'll well. Allie Paulson, I'll remind fans, she's a redshirt freshman and over Central. She's also a marketing GA in the baseball for baseball. So if you go to baseball games, you will see Allie out quite a bit, throwing T-shirts and, yeah. and things like that. Uh, Emerson, who pops into your mind as maybe somebody should, fans should have in their mind that might be yeah. playing a bigger role this fall? Yeah, well, I also like totally agree with Katie because also we've had no Stout and no Izzy. So we have really been like people who didn't play as much like as they yeah, did before it. yeah like Stout and Izzy were two very big people you would see last year but so we've had a lot of people that have just kind of been thrown into different roles and like I was telling Katie I was like Alyssa redshirted last year so did Allie so did Haley mm -hmm. so did Maddie like all of them have been playing in spring season so I think it's just been awesome to see them try to like get back into the groove of what like we're playing like all stuff like that because like it is different than high school without a doubt so I think it's like awesome for all of them kind of like I don't really have anyone in particular. I think it's like, it's been all of them because there's only 11 yeah. of us that can play right now. I mean, to think that they haven't played in a college match yet, just the speed is completely different. And also just the environments, it's nerve wracking, but I think they've handled it super well. And Sarah too. I know she's not, she wasn't here last semester, but I think she's handled herself very well, especially being thrown into such yeah. a large role where she's part of every yeah. single play. And I think she's done a great job with it.
We've seen yeah. her get way more comfortable too. And yes. Like, and her and Izzy also like have done a great like Izzy's done a great job trying to coach and help Sarah like in any way she can. Even in like the game, she's like helping Sarah with what to run. Like in any time, like Sarah maybe is like confused or doesn't know what to do just because like she hasn't played at this pace before. So it's like it's right. really it's way different to be honest. I think Izzy's done a great job of really helping Sarah and Sarah's done great of taking the information Izzy's giving her as totally. constructive criticism, not Izzy going against her at all. I don't think you find that everywhere when it's your own competition. Izzy's done just a great job of being supportive of Sarah and really supportive of everyone. Yeah. For that matter. Yeah, that's probably worth a little deeper dive with Izzy Strand on the mend. Sarah has stepped in and done the bulk of the setting. Uh, describe her. What, what, what will people see from her? What are her skills like? She seems like a very like content player for me. She's definitely a competitor. And she was quieter at first, but I think I'm really starting to see her come out of her shell a little bit. No doubt she's a hard worker. She just had kept going and going and going. She really doesn't get much of a break ever. She's our wood setter. And also the lifestyle adjustment from high school to here, being away from home, I think she's done a great job with that. And I would just expect to see someone who wants to continue to learn and get better that's what I think of when I see her and also in the weight room she's a yeah. super hard worker didn't say, miss a beat when she got here no I've never heard her complain never mm-hmm. heard any anything like negative come out of her mouth and like you said in the in the weight room like she's a really hard yeah. worker too she'd be an ideal person to recruit like, in my opinion yeah. so Emerson yeah are there high school seniors who you who would who, who you would say are not ideal to come in in the spring because of the big adjustment and then there are some that can handle that fast transition well I think even just for me like you like you play, like, high school, and you're like, oh, like, you're good in high school. Like, everyone's good in mm-hmm. high school. But then you get here, and you're like, no, like, everybody's good here. So, like, you know, it's just, like, a different, like, adjustment or, like, even, like, the nerves you get. Like, I can remember being so nervous, like, when I was first here. And, like, Katie was my closest friend at the time, but Katie wasn't here for, like, that first little bit that I was here. And so I remember being like, I just need Katie. Like, I told my mom. <laughs> like, I was like, it's just, like, it's a different transition. It's all people you didn't know. But I just hope, like, with the incoming, like, freshman class that we have coming in, that, like, we can do a good job of, like, making them feel a part of the team. Which they made us feel a part of the team, too. <laughs> but just, like, keeping that going and stuff. Describe your leadership roles. We mentioned that. You're two of the more experienced shockers now. How has that changed during your time here? Katie, you can you can start with that. I think that it's important. Obviously, they're seniors, juniors, whatever. There's kind of the idea of seniority. But I think on our team... The idea of seniority is to be a leader and lead by example, but just because someone's a freshman doesn't mean they don't deserve something or, um, like, playing and stuff. Like, everyone has the opportunity to play. The only thing people have is experience. But I think that helping them, even though they're a direct competition, I'll never forget when Annalie in my first game, um, I was so confused on what Lambo was saying (laughs) on this certain play, and she took me on the sideline and explained it to me. I was her direct competition, and she took that time to do that. And I remember thinking that is how I want to be. I want to help them through it, continue to work on stuff myself, but also just be there and also, you know, be their friend if they need that, be their teammate when they need that, and really show them kind of what the team culture is and continue to build that so that when people get here, it stays that way even once we're graduated. It continues on after. I was telling someone earlier, it's crazy because all the fifth and sixth years are starting to, like, not be a thing anymore because Mm -hmm. the COVID years are running out. So it's, like, weird because, like, we saw, like, the leaders ahead of us. Like, we're the leaders for both years we were here because they still had extra years. But, like, we only have four years. So, like, it's a different, like, it's different to think about. For sure. How, like, the fifth and sixth years are leaving. Even in our conference, like, when you look around, like, a lot of people lost a lot of people because of the fifth and sixth years. Yeah. Right, those COVID years are, are, are running out. So Emerson, I guess now we should probably, we've mentioned the people that Wichita State has lost. might be helpful to go back. Uh, so Briley Kelly, Sophia Rowling, Natalie Foster, Barbara Kohler, they all played big roles last year. They are all, all, all gone. So Emerson, as you're getting ready for the spring, are you really intentional and cognizant that, hey, I'm going to need to maybe speak up now or I'm going to need to do these things that perhaps these more experienced people did in previous years. How do you how do you approach that as your seniority rises? 
Yeah, I mean, I think, I don't really think I'm much of, like, a huge talk, like, huge talker or anything. I think I'm, like, okay, like, next ball, like, we just need to keep going, like, trying to move things forward. I feel like you, you're, like, kind of, you're a talker. Like, you, mm -hmm. Gabby, there's Izzy, like, those three kind of, like, fill that role better than probably I do, but... I feel like I'm always just like, oh, like... You're a lead by example I'd person. much rather lead by example yeah. than lead by talking, I feel like. I feel like if you make an error, you're next ball mentality, and watching that, that makes people want to be like that. Yeah, just, like, keep... I don't know. My dad always talks about this idea of, like, you keep moving, keep pushing forward. Mm -hmm. Like, how can you just keep going? And that's kind of, I guess, what I've adapted to. So, Katie, the returning group of Little should be really strong with yourself, Gabby mm -hmm. Moss, Annalie Hellesty, you mentioned, Reagan Anderson. Tell us about that. this group this spring. What are you guys working on? We continue to work on ball control. Um, obviously, a huge part of being a Little, so receive and defense. Also, with the new rule of doubles being allowed, we've, from the get-go, we've been setting all the time second ball. So that's been a big focus. Also, we start out every practice with this drill um, that we have to just dig a bunch of random balls, running down balls off the block, kind of awkward situations. Really, we're kind of being disciplined with that and also digging with our hands a lot more um, to keep plays alive. And then with that setting, um, running kind of quicker out of system. Balls, I think, is a big part of it. I'm glad you mentioned the new rule. Yeah. Fans are probably going to be curious about that. Explain that. So before the rule is made, it you'd see it a lot with setters or that second contact, a double contact, kind of when the ball would spin a lot, it would get called. Basically, they're contacting it twice. That is no longer a rule. You're allowed to double as long as it stays on your side. You can't send a ball over the net. If, it, if it's a double contact, that'll get called. But now... We can set on our side of the net, and it can spin and do whatever, and it'll be fine to play. Um, so because of that, beforehand, mostly only setters would set because it's, it's really an art. It's tough to do to make it clean every single time. But now that that rule is gone, they've encouraged all of us to be setting. It speeds up your offense, um, and it makes it – I mean, it gives us more options than we hand set. But – so, yeah, now doubles will not be... I think it gives a more in-system look to out-of-system balls. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so you Less time it. to wait for that ball to come down, go off your platform. Definitely more control with your hands, but the dig does have to be high enough still. You'll still see plenty of tabletop platform balls, I, I'm sure. But some of those big moments where those doubles kind of change the game will no longer be there. You may have just answered this, but now that you've played some matches with the new rule, how does it change the, the game? Um, I would say speeds up the offense, gives us the opportunity to be more accurate with it. It definitely takes time to go because we train tabletops. I remember when I got here, that was one of my hardest adjustments because in club when I was 18, I kept it very low. Now when you get here, it's basically you're hitting into the block if it's that low. So I got it up, and then right when I feel like I was really starting to get the hang of it, they changed it back to the setting. So I think it won't have... It'll have an impact for sure, but depends on if your setter's able to get to it. If you're a team that's very in system, might not affect you a ton. But if you're a team that is out of system, then you're going to have that option to run a quicker offense. I haven't seen a huge difference this spring. Yeah, I was going to say. But there are, there are moments where I did just go up and take with my hands, where last year I would never have even tried to set it with my hands. Yeah. I would automatically have tabletop. Or even I remember at practice, like, someone had doubled the ball and someone yelled double, and it was like, that's not a thing yeah. anymore. Like, no. it's weird to well, just think about those. Well, when you're playing OU, they yeah. doubled it over the net, and <laughs> all of us were kind of, we go double, they go, that's not a thing. And we said, no, you can't do it over the net. So it's still, like, out of habit, I think, people. We're still calling them, but... You have to yeah. keep playing now. So, yeah. So, Emerson, a lot of new faces on the front row with the departures we mentioned. That's going to change your role. The coaches say you're probably going to be six rotation. They're going to need you to score a lot. How have you prepared for this, this changing role? Yeah, I mean, I really kind of was mainly only playing three rows last year when I was playing, so I think I'm just trying to, to develop more in the back row too, just like passing – defense a lot I've been playing right back middle back left back just trying to figure out like where I fit fit in the best and I think like my back row attacking has gotten a lot better a even lot just better. this spring season and just like trying to like not be over on balls or two just like establish a relationship with Sarah too on like where the balls like can be set and stuff like that and I feel like 
all of us kind of in the front row, like Brooklyn, Maddie, ha Allie, Haley, like all of us have just kind of been trying to like establish our relationships with Sarah so that way like we can be a stronger, stronger layoff, strong offensively, sorry. So Katie, the uh, people around the program, they, de they describe you as a person, you were pretty loud, pretty energetic from the day you walked in the door as a freshman. Did that come naturally? Were you always like that? She's always like that. I live with her. <laughs> <laughs> I do think, like, my personality, I would say I'm outgoing, so I've kind of always been like that. But I remember when I was younger, I was very competitive, and sometimes it came off in a negative way, and one of my coaches said, you need to start making that more positive. You need to talk through stuff. So I just started doing that, and it just became a habit. Um, I realized even when I would coach the young girls, I'd be talking through the whole game out loud. So I think when I got here, it was definitely very natural for me at first. I was like, oh, shoot, is that going to be, like, too much? Especially, you know, as a freshman, I don't want people to think I'm, like, barging in or anything. But I think it did come naturally, and I love to hype people up and cheer people on. So I just – that's when I'm most comfortable when I'm acting like that, and I think I play better when I act like that. So I just kept it going. So you come from a family with several athletes, you yes. have brothers and sisters who are playing, mm -hmm. or sisters who are playing college athletics, right? Yes, my brother did in high school and all that, so. Right. How do you think that has shaped you to get you where you are? Well, the competitiveness for sure was always there. Family game night was not a thing in our house because it, it got too intense, uh, like card games. But we would go out and play basketball or volleyball always, and I'm so thankful my parents were competitive too. I think that... It just made me want to win and be the best I could at everything I did. And just the experiences that I got, um, showing them how to compete, too, being the oldest. Like, I remember my little sister, my mom was always like, she looks up to you. So kind of developing into the player I am, I think that did have an impact because I knew someone was watching me, someone was looking up to me. Well, but even even this go. weekend, her sister, your, her sister's oh. going to Omaha. Yeah, and she was at the game watching us play them. And I remember thinking, like, we have to win, or Katie's always going to hear about it. <laughs> yes, like, <laughs> or when or when we played them in the preseason, and then when they made the NCAA tournament over us, <laughs> we got in a big fight about that. Katie like texted me from the dinner table. <laughs> I, was like, I am so I angry said, right yeah, now. Yeah, we're at dinner right now, and she's telling me that <laughs> they're so much better. I'm like, no, they're great. <laughs> But we beat them, but good for them. But I was like, oh, my goodness. But the competitive drive never, ever stops. And I'm really thankful my whole family was like that because I think some people don't get it and some people do. But so never a dull moment with that, for sure. Please tell me there's a story about a Monopoly board being thrown or something like that <laughs> um, in family there, game night. I remember, gosh, my little sister. I my believe. little sister is probably full, like five, maybe. She's young. And... There were some cards thrown and some words said, and she was only five. <laughs> and I think I do remember I, there weren't many game nights after that, if any, but we started taking it like outside more of the, I don't know, basketball, wiffle ball, kickball, like anything outside was where we went. But family yeah. game nights always a good <laughs> source of stories. So, Emerson. Yeah. You would have also grown up in an athletic family with your dad and professional hockey. How did that shape you and get you to where you are? Yeah, well, I mean, I think growing up around my... My dad was always, a, like, the captain on every, like, AHL hockey team he ever played on, so I think I kind of just learned a lot about, like, leadership, and, like, my dad always stresses, like, the two things you can always control are, like, your effort and your attitude, and so, like, I like to think that, like, I prioritize those things just because that's what I heard a lot, like, growing up, too, and just, I don't know, I think he definitely had a huge impact, or, like, if I want to talk about volleyball with someone like or like just little things like I can always talk to him but like I've never felt like the pressure of like oh like you have to you have to you have to which I think is nice because I think a lot of people do feel that sometimes from their parents and I just think I don't know I have a brother who plays hockey too and I think my dad's just done a really great job of like teaching us like how we can be the best and like what we can do to get there kind of do you have a favorite hockey player favorite hockey team well, probably the team that my dad coaches for. Cause <laughs> I have to, so it probably sure. changes every time he gets traded. Or and who does he coach for now? Um, he coaches for the Sabres. The Buffalo the Sabres. 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 Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm laughing at Katie. Uh, Katie but, um, yeah, so I feel like probably just wherever my dad always was is who I liked. But um, I just remember even when we were in Europe, like, 
after the games, because my dad dad finished playing out there, like, you skate around with your kids, and, like, the whole crowd is, like, clapping and everything. Like, there's just some super cool experiences I got that I don't think a lot of other kids get, got to get, which I think, I think that is also what kind of shaped me into me. Like, I moved 19 times as a kid, so, like, I feel like I'm pretty, like, adaptable. And, like, so when new people come in, I feel like I, like, want to make relationships with them because I don't want them to feel, like, left out or anything. So you've kind of, you've been there. You've been through that. You think yeah. That? And I feel like I've done uh, a good job handling it. But, no, I think but, you're great at great at that for sure. Thank you so much. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was going to have each of you say something nice about the other. Oh, <laughs> we love that game. Every since they three days, they so. Right, yeah, we right. play that game sometimes. <laughs> okay, let's go then. Emerson, say something nice about the game. <laughs> no, I <laughs> Katie always, I don't even know. Katie does a great job of thinking about me. Like, sometimes. Like, last night she called me and she was like, do you want anything from wherever she was? Like, she always thinks about me, which is really nice. Way to make it about you. I don't know. Was this, uh, let's see, Boba or Seven Brew? Or... No, that we, we're Chipotle, Chick-fil-A, Jersey Mike's. <laughs> In quick trip, so like if you want to find us, that's where we are. Okay. Those places, all right. Okay. Katie, say something nice about Emerson. Well, Emerson's my best friend. <laughs> um, I just love, I think that we're very similar and just anywhere we go, we can have a good time. And I, sorry. <laughs> sorry, we don't, we don't talk really about do it like stuff. this. <laughs> um, also, though, I would say Emerson is someone who I really enjoy like playing with on a teammate. Um, if I have an ideal teammate, I would say Emerson is definitely Thanks so much. you're welcome. Emerson is definitely someone who I love to be teammates with. I remember saying that about Weber too, and I feel like Emerson and Weber really remind me of each other. Just both very competitive, cheer people on, but it's still there's that intensity. Like we gotta win, we gotta get it done. So I'm glad you mentioned Morgan Weber. I really enjoyed watching. Her I play, miss her I so much. Did, I think she did a lot of things for this team that maybe were not easy to appreciate. I, let's, do, I, let's do Morgan I, Weber let's appreciation. Let's do it. I, I love Weber. Yeah. Since we first got Us like three we, were always very good friends. Yeah, we used to, well, actually, there's another drink place that we always go to that we didn't mention, oh. and that's where else you could find us. Yeah. But the Weber nutrition always, for, yeah, or not downtown, for us, downtown, downtown nutrition. nutrition. We have a different name for it, so sometimes we forget, but I don't know. I think Weber just offered a lot to the team that, like you said, wasn't always, like, I mean, she wasn't, like, one of the big hitters on our team, so sometimes she kind of went unrecognized, but... Her ball control was great. She did a great job, like, also leading the team. I don't know. I, I have would a lot of good just think she was, her. when you needed something, Weber was the person you go to. You need a good pass. You go to Weber. You need a shot to get out of a tough situation. You went You went to Weber. And I think that, like Emerson said, when you're not this huge, like, point scoring necessarily, like, person, you get overlooked. But I think that Weber contributed so much more that, like you said, people don't see, but us as teammates, I always saw. I always was happy to play with Weber. She was definitely one of my closest friends um, off the court as well, and I think a lot of people could say that about her, that she was just a fun person to be around, looked out for other people. If you needed someone to talk to, she was there, but I yeah. miss her, but I'm happy to see where she goes. This podcast took a really unexpected nice turn with the Morgan Weber <laughs> appreciation. You handled that handled that well. So, Katie, uh, one of the big things I learned about you last fall, coaches were super happy with the way you handled. Early in the fall, you were not playing very much. You kind of kept at it. All the things coaches love. You, didn't, you were positive. You kept working, and you worked your way back into the lineup. Take us through that. How did you avoid getting kind of discouraged? Well... Like Emerson was saying earlier, I've also been told you can only control so many things. You control your effort, your attitude, and also your reaction is one that I always keep in mind. I think that I knew I was capable of doing better. I understood why I wasn't playing at first. My stats were not where they needed to be. But I remember thinking if no matter if your stats are good, you had a good or red practice, you can control your energy. You can control, you can bring more the, to the team than just a good pass or a good assist or a good serve. So I think that that was kind of my mentality. And then I think I play best when I'm loose and energetic like that. And so that's just kind of what I did. And then slowly I just started working my way back into it. And then I just got very comfortable and kind of kept going with that. So Shockers are going to Brazil in May. You'll play three matches, hopefully. You'll be there about 10 days. Number one question, do you have your passports? 
Yeah, yes, trying but to our get, visas. I got blocked from going to Brazil <laughs> because my visa got denied. I got accepted right away, and I'm not sure how, but yeah, yeah our passport. Well, Emerson and I have had our passports because we want to go on a trip to Mexico someday, yeah. but we're, we're prepared for that. But the visas has been quite the issue with the team. Some of us are getting approved, some of us aren't, but... Annalie got her visa back with someone else's face on it. Yeah. So, so if anyone has a good person to take pictures of <laughs> her visas, yeah. let us know, because yeah, we're getting denied left and right. Yeah. Okay. But I'm super excited for Brazil. Me too. And it's awesome that, like, we have the opportunity to meet the incoming freshman class earlier than, like, yeah. a lot of other schools. For do. sure. Yeah, what are you most looking forward to seeing or doing in Brazil, Katie? Well, I'm a big beach girl. I think anyone who knows me knows that. So I'm super excited for that. But also just, I've never been out of the country before. So that'll you be... You haven't? Mm-mm. No, I haven't actually. Oh. And I love to travel. So I don't know. I just never been out. But I'm super excited for that. And also just, I mean, I love volleyball. And so playing somewhere new is going to be super cool. And I think a great experience. And to do it with this team will be super fun. Yeah. Emerson, how about you? What are you looking forward to? Um, honestly, like I'm just looking forward to like being around everybody and like a play like and we're going to play volleyball, but also like we're going to get to like see Brazil and kind of like just see how it works, like how things go out there. So I'm just excited to like go somewhere new. I mean, I've yeah. been to Europe, Canada, Mexico. It's like it's somewhere I haven't been before, so I'm excited. Let's get a fan recommendation. Katie, what are you reading, watching, listening to? Oh gosh. Um I all okay. I'm a big shopper, and so I'm always watching hauls on what people are getting, um, whether it be makeup or like athletic wear and stuff like that. Um, I'm watching hauls too on what to wear in Brazil. Yes, we're definitely planning is, our Brazil outfits. Okay, you're gonna have to educate me on hauls. Okay, so when people get stuff from online shopping and in person. They'll give a haul, so they'll show what they got, where they got it from, maybe what they're going to wear it to, yeah. and then it kind of like influences us. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to get that now. That was the most us answer we could get. <laughs> that that was. is what we're watching. <laughs> it is what we're watching, always. We'll send it to each other all the time. Yeah. So Denon Gehrig said he thought you had a career as an influencer, and I guess <laughs> is that, that, that sounds to be legitimate. Denny knows, <laughs> Denny knows what he's talking she, about. She's so. an influencer at heart. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know, Denny brought that up one day, I was like, maybe someday I will. I think I'd struggle if people were mean to me, though, <laughs> Everyone always says that, like, if there's criticism, but I could totally see myself maybe one day, like, doing that, I don't know, we'll have to see. What do you think, Everson? She makes money from it. She's, like, going to give some money to me. Like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going to help her. Okay, we'll see about that. There, there, uh, there's no reason to wait. I mean, that's the whole NIL thing, Should we start it, Everson? So, yeah. We're going to start a YouTube channel. Everson and Katie. Oh, we, we went to a concert last summer, and she filmed a video of us getting, getting ready, doing our makeup. So I think I think she's ready. Oh, there we go. We'll see. Workshop that video, get some notes, and, and get going. We're going to send it to Denning. We're going to send it to Denning to edit it. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, we have the resources. You can do it. <laughs> I think that's got potential. Emerson, your advice for a high school athlete who is in the process of deciding on a college, what, what would you tell them to look for? Um, I think just value the people that you're going to spend time with every single day. Like, we are always around the volleyball team. It's like, so you're true. always around the coaches. Like, make sure you have good relationships with them because at the end of the day, like, that is who you will spend 24 hours with I mean I live with like I live with players they'll be your family yeah so I think just prioritize those things I know people a lot of people say like oh like look at the school and stuff but honestly like we spend a lot of time with each other like that's what Mm -hmm. I would have focused on I feel like okay Katie how about you I would say go somewhere that feels like home and I think for me personally people are a big part of that the relationships like Emerson said you are with them all the time. We live together. We go to school together, practice. We work every together. Day. We, we work we, we, everything. And so I think finding somewhere where there's people there that have the same beliefs, same all that with you is really important. And, yeah, that's what I would say. Go somewhere that feels like home. Shocker Volleyball, they are wrapping up their spring schedule. They play Kansas and Missouri on Saturday in Lawrence. Katie Galligan and Emerson Wilford, they were very patient through some technical difficulties. They took us on a nice detour to Morgan Weber territory. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, this is Rick Muma, president of Wichita State University. Check out the latest episode of the Forward Together podcast. Each episode, I sit down with different guests from Shocker Nation to celebrate the vision and mission of Wichita State University. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for listening to the Roundhouse Podcast, courtesy of Wichita State University Strategic Communications. We encourage you to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can find more Roundhouse content at GoShockers.com. Malcolm out near the timeline. Left side of the floor to Baker. Ron works deeper to the wing. Fires a three. Good! Ron Baker with his third three-point field goal of the game, and Wichita State goes ahead by four.